Eagles. What's up, guys? Listen, welcome to episode 109. Yes, it is. And I already know that baby daddy over here is I'm, really I'm, excited. I'm bubbling. I'm bubbling over here. I'm bubbling. <laughs> he is really excited for our guest, Mr. Don Ruffin. What's up, Don? What's up? What's up, guys? Thanks Thank for you, having man. me. Thank you for doing this for us. Absolutely. Okay, where do I start? Let me slow down because I'm excited. He is excited. <laughs> Let, can we tell the viewers who you are and what you do? Can we start there? Yeah, sure. Cool. Uh, okay, um, I'm Don. Um, go back, or my name's Donovan Ruffin. Uh, I have a wholesale company called Equity Cash Offer here in Dallas. Um, we do deals all over the state of Texas, and you know, we're, we're recently opened up some other markets. But um, yeah, so CEO of Equity Cash Offer. Been in the game since 2015, and uh, yeah, we have a pretty pretty solid team now, and. We're just going to keep it pumping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for your, those guys that don't know, uh, Don is one of the one of the big dogs out here in DFW and other markets. Uh, I want to talk real estate, a lot of real estate. But first, let me start. I know for a fact that you started off in sales. Yeah. Uh, how did that go? And how did you? Uh, I know you did a lot of door knocking, right? Yeah. How did you uh, overcome a lot of objections? Objections and rejection, uh, I guess. A uh, rejection. Yeah, I guess, uh, you know, knocking on doors is, is probably one of the most brutal aspects of being in direct sales, <laughs> sure. you know. So, yeah. uh, you know, after I mean, I've always been like entrepreneurial. I mean, ever since I was a kid and started making money because I didn't grow up, you know, um, overprivileged. Right. Yeah. So um, my mom worked 16 hours a day and, you know, we, we uh, had everything that we needed. But mm -hmm. anything past that, we had to figure it out for ourselves. So mm -hmm. I was always like buying and selling stuff. And yeah. then when I turned 18. um I was so excited because you could be 1099. Right? So, <laughs> <laughs> right. so uh, you know, all my friends went off to college and, you know, did their thing and joined fraternities and stuff like that. And I just went straight into sales. So I kind of saw that as like my education, you know. But yeah. as far as like the rejection aspect to it, man, it's just, um, I mean, it, it, when you, you make a commitment to stick to it, you'll figure it out. You yeah. know what I mean? So, I mean, as far as rejection, I mean, there's so many different variables when it, when it comes to what type of objections and rejection and things of that nature. I mean, in that business, people would just slam the door on your face yeah. and pull guns on you and put, put the dogs at you and stuff like that. So it was just, you know, learning wise, it was just like, man, that education that I got in, in that, in that field, it, it, it definitely still serves me today. So, what, well, ahead, I'm sorry. That was my question. What were, what was that field? What were you selling door to door when you yeah. first started out? Uh, so we started, I started out selling cable. So I don't know if you've heard of at and mm -hmm. Yeah, A lot of it's like digital on apps now, but, um, essentially we're just door knocking, selling, uh, TV and internet on okay. the phone. Um, I mean, like I, I, I remember selling house phones. Nobody even has house phones anymore, <laughs> right. you know what I mean? Um, and you know, that at and would come into these neighborhoods and, you know, up, update like the service lines and stuff like that. And then we just get dropped off in these neighborhoods and go upgrade people or go sell new services and oh, wow. get commission. So I want to back up because just as you are talking about starting off in that way, uh, I think to myself, and I am in the real estate space as well, but I think to myself when our doorbell rings at 6 p.m. and there's somebody selling solar panels. Right, yeah. or, trying to eat dinner. Yeah, and I remember um, even we lived in Chicago in the hood. You had, you would always know who just started a sales job because they'll be like <laughs> riding bikes with suits on right. yeah. um, to go door to door. But that's a different level of hustle yeah. than yeah. I think right now We there is a picture of entrepreneurship that someone will look at you now and say, oh, you've been doing this since 2015 and yeah. now you are where you are. Yeah. Boom. It happened overnight. But it sounds like it wasn't quite no, overnight. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, obviously, when I started in the game, I started off swinging, you know, because I mean, that was just one of the advantages of having experience in a different field, you know, transferring a lot of those skills into a new space. It definitely gave me a huge edge and it still gives me an edge today yeah. mm -hmm. um, for sure. But yeah, I mean, as far as like the sales aspect, I mean, the biggest things that I've learned is you know, I mean, obviously have a product or a service, right? But, you know, being able to communicate communicate with people on, on, a, on a, in a way and being able to connect with people is one of the most important attributes. And that's probably one of the underlying factors that kind of trans, transferred over into the real estate space. But before we go, because I'm about to go straight into real estate talk. What did, what were some of the biggest things you learned from sales when you were doing that? From starting um, out in yeah. that way. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, obviously consistency is everything, right? Yeah. So everything's a numbers game. Everybody has different skill sets too because, I mean, obviously my skill sets can be different than somebody else's, but the reality of it is everybody has what works for them when it comes to numbers. So it's just like if you knock enough doors, you're going to get sales, yeah. right? So it's yeah. how many doors does it take? Um, and then over time, you continue to improve and, and find ways to give it 
find ways to get better. But, you know, some of the big things is, is being able to connect with people emotionally and figure out what their wants and needs are. And if you're able to serve, serve them in, in those ways, then, you know, you can do business with somebody. Yeah. Sweet. Now, I love that. Corey and I, we were actually having a conversation um, today because someone called Corey's phone and they were just like, hey, um, I got this deal and can you close in seven days and yeah. put a $5,000 right away. That was yep. his first pitch out the gate. First and, 10 yep. seconds. And what I share with him is that, you know, the difference is to this is why sometimes investors have a bad rap because it feels very transactional. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I think what I hear you saying is the conversation that we had is that it's all about building relationships. Absolutely. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is what will make your business or even his business stand out differently is because even though it is traditionally a more transactional business, mm-hmm. it sounds like you are really heavily focused and your background help you with that relationship aspect. Oh yeah. I mean, especially in the real estate space, I mean, obviously, you know, relationships is pretty much everything. It is yeah. it. Um, but you know, there's, there's differences too. Cause you have like B2B sales, like business to business, and then you have business to consumer. They're very different in a lot mm-hmm. of ways. Um, but one thousand percent in the b2b space like in when you're selling a property or even you're doing business with somebody in the space already the whole purpose behind that is to build a relationship so you can continue to do business with that person not just hey one stop well, and yeah. That's yeah. It. Hit it and yeah. quit it. That's people get want. into the space and think that way and then they don't last very long yeah you yeah know? i mean obviously you guys have been in this space a lot longer than i have and you've seen people come and go yeah and that's just what it boils down to is people don't care about other people and they, they don't have the desire to over uh, extend, you know, the conversation or even just general intentions to build a relationship with somebody. I'm, I'm even thinking when I reached out to you uh, a, a while ago about being on a podcast, the, the first thing you said was, yeah, man, I love the collab, you know, like just, mm-hmm. just the relationship aspect yep. of that, you know. Uh, so let's, let's go for it, man. Real estate. How, how was your, uh, initial involvement how, how did you get yeah. in were you i think you were flipping starting out right yeah i started off heavy in, in fix and flip because i had you know I, I built up or me and my business partner at the time we had a whole other marketing company in the door-to-door space so mm-hmm. um i mean i had some money not a lot but you know i was looking to invest mm-hmm. passively into the space and um one of my buddies got into real estate and started off wholesaling he sent me a picture of a check for eighteen thousand dollars and i'm like <laughs> man if this guy can do it right anything's possible you know right. so yeah. it's just like that that within itself uh gave me a belief to hey this is possible you know this person can do it so can i yeah um that's kind of what really pushed me to get involved in the space and you know i got got in did a couple wholesale deals and, and learned the trade learned how to pull comps learn how to uh find deals uh, but my goals was okay let me be the investor just because i had a lot of pride and ego yeah you yeah. know it's like wholesaling it's just like man i'm passing up on money so i was like trying to keep as much as i could so yeah. i was like trying to find ways to buy it find ways to fund it find ways to fix it and then make a majority of the money and went down that path and um yeah i was picking up a lot of properties and mm. Now, granted, I wasn't making as much just because I wasn't, you know, acquiring the deal direct to seller. I was, I entered into more so the B2B space, right? Yeah. So I was buying a lot from wholesalers and, and agents mm-hmm. um, and never counted pockets and seeing how much they were making. I was like, that's awesome. You know, you found the deal, you know, I'm able to, you know, buy it because I have raised private money and then I had contractors lined up. So I kind of found my my groove in, in a way. Yeah. Um, I think that's kind of how we met. It right? is. Yeah. I was, yeah, you yeah. Uh, you, you were uh, wholesaling some deals and I met you that, um, during that time yeah yeah i think me me you uh and Corey simpson we've probably yeah. been around the same time yeah. so one thing i know about you man is that uh you are definitely a team player and you're definitely a giver yeah uh i've been to a couple of your masterminds and I, I i have to openly admit i was very surprised man just by how you were willing to share so much information yeah uh and i think that that's amazing because most people aren't let me start yeah. there mm-hmm. um so let's talk about equity cash offer right yeah. what uh how did you really transition yeah like yeah. how did you know that you needed a team and how big you wanted yeah. to be? yeah well yeah I'm, I'm i'm definitely over giving you know i do have uh, you know sharp people on my team but it wasn't always that way okay. you know mm-hmm. so i mean even before i started equity cash offer i had rough in real estate investments and i was like super prideful and egotistic behind it because it was just me was right? that the addison office uh, what was that at? well yeah i mean it, equity cash offer launched in the addison office because okay. it kind of transitioned from my marketing company but you know when, when it was just myself i was just a fix and flipper it was rough in real estate investments okay. you know what i mean it was just just me looking for deals looking for money and then looking for contractors 
Um, and then, you know, I was kind of like looking at both of my businesses, you know, in the real estate and then my marketing company. And it's like, okay, I have to make a decision here right. mm-hmm. um, because I'm giving my people on both sides 50% of me. I want to give 100% because, yeah. you know, I have the saying, you chase too many rabbits, you're never going to catch any of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of where I, I was. I was getting really frustrated and I was going insane because I was doing like the same numbers every year. And I realized I couldn't do it all by myself anymore. Okay. Um, and then I just kind of took a, a step back and, you know, uh, looked at the future, right? So it's like, what do I see myself doing five years from now? And that's kind of when I made the jump. It's like, okay, now I need to start developing a team in, in the real estate space because this is where I see a future. Um, so, you know, I, I've kind of learned is like, I can only do so much alone. Mm-hmm. Um, regardless of what I do, you know, it's like, I'm not the smartest person. I'm not the sharpest person. I'm not the best closer. I'm not the best at everything. Um, I would, I, I used to think I was, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I really did. And, you know, I had a lot of success, but the reality of it is, you know, we, you know, I was more so of a hustler, right? So yeah. I wasn't building a business. I was just making money. You were just hustling. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it gets boring. And I'm yeah. sure you guys know, it's just For like, sure. you can make a lot of money, but you know, it gets, it gets boring pretty quickly. And then you realize, you know, when you have, you find your real fulfillments in life, it's, for me, it wasn't just always about money, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's inspiring to see, especially when you're in, in survival stage or a hustler stage. But I mean, over time you find, uh, um, you find that your, your purpose and what you're doing starts to drop and that it, 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 it correlates to your productivity too. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Not as motivated to, to take certain actions. Yeah. No. So you, you just said like John, you, Don, look, I was about to call you Don. The Don. The Don. He's the Don. <laughs> right. You just dropped so much. And, you know, I think that one thing that I heard, and I would like you to just touch on a little bit, because a lot of our eagles that watch us are solopreneurs, right? Mm-hmm. And there is that level of, you know, I love that you are evolved enough to say, hey, it was ego. It was yeah. certain things. But sometimes it's just kind of like, no, I, no one's going to do it like me or I don't want to split the money or I'm afraid to scale. Mm-hmm. So what was going on internally? And I don't know if it was like an actual action that made you feel like, OK, I have to shift and do things differently. But I think it would be helpful to just really touch on that a little more because i feel like that's where a lot of entrepreneurs get stuck and they never move past that hamster wheel of that same old production that they have yeah um like i said i wasn't always this way it took like a lot of hard lessons and and humility to kind of grow to a point to find a groove and you know especially when it comes to developing a team because i was a business owner so I was like, you know, and when you're a business owner, the goal, the main goal should be, hey, how can I net profit the most money? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, mm-hmm. um, and I was going about every day. It's just like, how can I net the net profit the most? So, you know, when I would bring people on to, you know, helping the team, I was like trying to find ways to pay them the least. Mm-hmm. I was finding find ways to like keep them down in a certain way just because yeah. my ego is like, man, I can't yeah. have somebody come into my own company and make more than me. You yeah. know what I mean? And, you know, I had to learn tough lessons over mm-hmm. time. You know, I had sharp people that, you know, trusted in me. And then over time you realize, you know, people will work harder for opportunity than they will for money. Mm-hmm. Um, but most importantly, it's just, it has to be fair. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's just when, when you're operating in a business, it's not just about net profits. It's about the people, especially sales and marketing. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's the bottom line. You know, if you don't take care of your people, it's just you're never going to make it. One, you're always going to be on a hamster wheel. One thing I want to ask you, because you you have a very, very talented team mm-hmm. from Omar to Lauren to Reed. Like everybody I, I pretty much know, for the most part, on the team. Mm-hmm. How do you find people? I, your, your vetting process just has to be like yeah. really, really amazing. Yeah. Um, I mean, we, we keep the recruiting machine on. And what I like to say is like we're always seeking um, people to, to come be a part of what we're doing. Right? Okay. So um, when you have real intentions to continue to look for good people, you know, there's always going to be people coming in. And it's a similar process to even like the, the direct to consumer model where it's just like, hey, if you talk to enough people, you're eventually going to find the right candidates. Right. Yeah. That's essentially yeah, yeah. what happened with us. Is because, I mean, if you look at the team now and the people that we've talked to, I mean, we're talking hundreds of people, mm. um, like hundreds and hundreds of people that came <laughs> to the interview. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we're talking hundreds of people that actually were on payroll at yeah. certain points, you know, and over time you get better. Right. So you get better at, you know, um, correlating people that can actually fit within the culture. You find people that can kind of see more sort of long term vision. Um, you find people that you can kind of trust to like go through, you know, tough times and stick with you. Uh, but most importantly is you got to kind of like find the underlining factors of real core values within people, because Mm. a lot of times people get involved and, you know, they, they come with their own personal desires. So it's like one of the biggest things that we look for in people is like, can you play team? 
can you see into the future? Do you plan to see this opportunity as a career versus something part time or short term? Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, how can we? How can you see and position yourself to see an opportunity to grow with us at a company? Um, so I think a couple of those things uh, make a big difference. But obviously, you know, there's bad people, right? Yeah. So bad people, you know, will get attracted to kind of like your lifestyle and things of that nature. So mm-hmm. I've learned the hard way too. It's just like when we bring people in, it's just like, you know, I live a certain lifestyle because I've been doing it for almost 10 years. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I've yeah. been an entrepreneur for a long time. It's not going to happen overnight, mm-hmm. right? So um, it's not really realistic to kind of promote that lifestyle uh, to people that are a part of the team. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Right. Um, so it's just kind of being straight up with people, you know, just because there's a lot of people even, even, so that they they want to learn obviously there's nothing wrong with that but um it's kind of what i was saying is just we want people to be a part of a team as far as a career not just kind of come in and soak everything in and try to be one of our direct competitors so we're very upfront with people you know what i'm saying and if you want to do that it's completely okay it's like no hard feelings we're not looking at you any sort of way it's just you know it's not it it doesn't kind of fit our model and i mean that's kind of where you know the education piece came from like the mastermind and stuff like that just because i understand there's a demand for and people want that but you know as far as the internal um staff it's just like we are a unit we're gonna mm-hmm. stay a unit even me i'm a part of the team it's not yeah. just me you know what i'm saying yeah for sure so no, yeah i love that um and i love that one thing that donnie just i want to keep calling you Donnie. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. one thing that don just um talked about was you know going from and this is an abundant mindset thing right sure. that definitely when i think from a scarce mindset that you saw a need where there is an opportunity for you to actually educate other people mm-hmm. who essentially would be your competitors, right? Yep. Maybe, mm-hmm. you know, so that takes a lot of confidence yep. in what you are doing and what you're placed here for that. I don't think a lot of people are at. Can for you sure. touch on that a little bit? Yeah. Um, I mean, like once again, it was just like, I avoided it for so many years because I, my pride and ego, it's like, man, I don't want to teach somebody everything I know. So they could just be my direct competition mm-hmm. where all of a sudden it's less for me. Yeah. yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but once I started to kind of participate in a different aspect where it's just like, okay, let's see what happens. Let me just put other people on and expect literally nothing in return and what happens. And what I realized over time, you know, if you do that enough times, it's eventually going to come back. Mm -hmm. Um, and in fact, you know, we started a whole division within our company to collaborate with people in the JV division. So it's like, genius, by the way. um, yeah. So it's just like, I mean, even that aspect is just like, we were shunning away deals. It's like, Hey, we're going to only focus on our own deals. We're not going to be able to help you unless we can actually, you know, make terms of being able to close on ourselves. And then we realized, you know, there's a demand there too, yes. you know? Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it definitely took a lot of years to kind of get out of a, a mental space to just kind of realize, you know, you're, I'm not creating competition. I'm creating allies. I'm mm-hmm. creating, you know, a, a community. I'm creating um, an opportunity to actually help people in real life to yeah. better their lives. And, when I talk about fulfillment, that's really what it, what it boiled down to just because, you know, like I said, it's just like money's good. You know, lifestyle is great. You know, family's awesome, trips, everything, every, like you have everything. Yeah. But what's after that? You yeah. know? Um, and for me, it was just like I, I really wanted to, you know, um, be in a position to to serve people and put people on and really intentionally expect nothing in return. You know what I'm saying? And and, and when you do that, you know, God's going to bless you in different ways. Yeah. Let, me, let me ask you this, um, Don, because we've known each other for a long time. I've followed your career. Mm-hmm. Um, somebody at the level that you are now, how do you continue to sharpen your leadership skills? Mm-hmm. And how do you like? How do you find a mentor? Yeah, so uh, I guess there's kind of two ways to go about it. But I'm I'm like really good on, uh, or what I do know is like if I'm going to ask advice from somebody, I want to ask like kind of what what where they're spe- what they specialize in, yeah. right, in that specific di- division, right. Um, so when I seek mentorship, it's like, obviously I have intentions of wanting something better for myself. Right. Mm-hmm. So when I go out and seek somebody, it's like, I want the best person to help me in that division or somebody that I can ask questions that can genuinely help me so I can improve in this area. Okay. Um, and that's kind of like the first step is just kind of mapping out what I need and what I want. Mm-hmm. And, um, then the next step is to seek that person. Okay. What I'm saying? okay. Um, and it works different in different divisions. Right. So, um, you know, when, when it comes to mentors, you know, obviously the online presence is very big. The space is very big. People are openly giving, but you know, what it boils down to is like, is the fulfillment going to be there? Am I able to get what I pay for? Mm -hmm. Um, and I started to realize, you know, a lot of mentors that I have are not even online at Mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, especially like people in my personal life and personal development when it comes to like family, um, and spirituality, um, you know, a lot of these people, 
there is no ego. Like they don't need to be online. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. So, right. Uh, I found a lot of good, good people to, you know, help me, um, you know, figure out different aspects of my life, even offline, just by having clear intentions. Like, Hey, this is what I want. This is what I need. Let me find the best person in that division. Okay. Um, so going about finding them, it's just, it's different for everybody. Right. So obviously social media is a big platform. You can easily, you know, find somebody that you can connect with. Cause if you don't like talking to somebody, it's just like, why, why would I pay somebody money if it, I, I don't align yeah, with that person, sure. you know what I'm saying? So it just kind of varies. Yeah. Okay. Uh, on, on leadership, um, yeah. you guys lead well. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you, how do you stay elite in that division? Like, is it just continued just education in the space? Is it continued just masterminds that you attend? I, I see you, you do a yeah. lot of masterminds. I see them online, mm-hmm. uh, even the, uh, the ones on the computer, you know, yeah. um, but also in person. Mm-hmm. So is it, is it there that you're gaining information and staying sharp? Uh, yeah. well, yeah, I mean, obviously seeking mentors, you know, personal development when it comes to, you know, even reading books. I mean, I think what, what you have to understand is like, you, you only know so much, yeah. mm-hmm. right. But you know, you can, you can withhold experience for a certain period of time, but when it comes to growth, you have to seek new information. You yeah. have to learn new skill sets too. Yeah. It's not just about something that you read or somebody that you listen to or podcasts and stuff like that. When you, when you think of things to improve and grow, it's more than just knowledge. It's, it takes skill, mm. right? So learning new skill sets. Um, which I think is huge. And I, I think that helped me a lot significantly, um, not just in leadership, but in other divisions too. Like every single year I make a goal to learn a new skill, mm. learn something new, um, every single year. And if you do that every single year, what's going to happen in 10 years? Yeah. yeah sure. you're gonna have a, what's your skill for this year? <laughs> um, uh, coding. Okay. Which AI hey, actually helps a lot with that. Cause uh, I was yeah. actually going to uh, go back and take like college classes to like learn coding and stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think obviously that's the future and I think that's going to re- really help us skill. Cause obviously I figured out, you know, the, the people aspect, you know, the funding aspect and, you know, the systems and processes, but I think another a piece that equity cash offer definitely needs is software. Yeah. So I, I love it because it, you know, you are operating in the present, but also thinking futuristic mm-hmm. and preparing yourself, right? Yeah. What they say, if you get ready you don't, or stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, one thing that I just want to backpedal a little bit is that piece where you when it comes to i know that there's a mindset around bringing the team on and starting to develop but then there's also a mindset around like actually starting to make that investment Mm -hmm. of the thing that you're not quite sure of how it's going to turn out and did you experience any mental roadblocks um were there any seeds of doubt or how did you go by by how did you go about the preparation to actually invest in scaling Mm-hmm. Um, and what were some of the roadblocks that you may or may not have had with that? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, if you think like to the beginning of my career, like even before I did a deal, it was just marketing. It's just like, is this going to work or is mm-hmm. it not going to work? But what's going to happen if I don't do it? Nothing's yeah. going to nothing's going to happen. But I've also learned, too, it's like when you invest money, it, even if you lose, you still learn something. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you hear that all the time, but it's just kind of the reality. And that's one of the biggest edges that equity cash offer has and been had for a long time is we constantly beta test new strategies all the time because times change people change i mean 10 years ago I, my only marketing strategy was bandit signs, bandit signs yeah. you see what i'm saying it's just like it, it, that was it mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying so it's just you know constantly developing new new strategies every single year every single quarter and continue to beta test and just not expect to lose but you you know obviously prepare for the worst and hope for the best um but i, I think there's a um another a- attribute that is kind of like downplayed a little bit, but a lot of people say, Hey, just go all in, invest everything that you got. Um, and then just hope for the best. <laughs> and when you're a business owner, that's not really how it works. Yeah. Right. So mm-hmm. it's just like starting small is very cool. Cause yeah. you know, it's like, if, it, it's not like gambling, but the cool, the cool part about, you know, investing is you can always bet on yourself. Yeah, yes. for sure. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And you know, aligning your ego in, in that manner, it, it just kind of reduces a lot of anxiety and fear when it comes to, you know, in investing money into something. See what I'm saying? You um, have, um, you've done a lot in this space in such a short period of time. You're not even 30 yet, right? Uh, I'm 28. 28, right. That is crazy. I know. <laughs> in just crazy. A, a, yeah. a short period of time, man, you, you've gained a lot of success. 
I see. Wait, side note. Donnie is closer to our kids' age. Me and Corey? Yeah. Our son you, you is 22. Like yeah, 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 yeah. He'll be 23 yeah. in like two days. Yeah, two days. So, he'll be 23. Yeah. yeah. So that's so, amazing, ooh, man. So, so shout I, out to you, man. Shout I'm, out for making me feel old. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, I'm proud yeah. auntie over here. I'm right. proud auntie. Thank no, it really makes it really makes me feel good, man, to to have seen it, right? But I've noticed. Uh, you're talking rental properties now mm-hmm. for a yep. couple of years now. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's talk about that play because yep. you know people know you. Uh, you know, investor, wholesaler. Mm-hmm. But again, I'm 45 years old, right? I yeah. don't have a 401k. I don't have so my rental property portfolio is my retirement, yeah. right? So I like the fact that even at 28, you understand you understand the concept of a cash flow and appreciation mm-hmm. over time. Can you talk yep. about that a little bit? Yeah. So the the whole rental play came. I mean, for a lot of years, you know, <laughs> you know, it's like I was trying to just like when you know one of my mentors told me this is like if you justify something you're gonna make it happen mm. right good or bad right so um i couldn't justify you know collecting 200 dollars in cash flow versus collecting like a thirty thousand dollar check it just took a long time for me to justify that yeah the biggest one of the biggest tickers is um was taxes you know mm-hmm. all of a sudden you make a lot of money and then there's no way to you know you got to report something you know yeah. what I'm saying? especially when you acquire bank loans and you know i you know even to this day, I'm being completely honest and vulnerable. It's like I owe the IRS right now for like half a million dollars. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I've been making a lot of money for a lot of years. So and that's I mean, after buying the color, the 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 rolls, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm talking from taxes from like 2015. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So being on payment plans and stuff like that. So it took really real real hard lessons. I remember, um, you know, one of the first couple of rentals we took down, the IRS put a lien on the house for 115 thousand dollars, mm. um, and I had private money on it. And we we're looking to refi with the bank and we had to pay the, I mean, obviously when you're working with private money, you want to maintain those relationships. Yeah. So it was just like, man, cause I, I was like, man, I'm on a payment plan. I'm making payments on, on time. Uh, I understand there's interest and stuff like that, but nobody told me about the penalties. Nobody told me about the acquiring, uh, uh, acquiring interest. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously there's ways to negotiate with that, but I just didn't have enough time. So I had to stroke a check to the IRS for $114,000. And when I did that, I was like, man, this is, well, this will never happen again. You know, yeah. if I, if I just kind of position myself to park money into an asset versus just collecting the money, cause I don't need it. You know, it's just like money, like right. we have cash reserves. So it's just like, you only need X amount of dollars to yeah. live a good lifestyle mm-hmm. and, you know, to continue to grow and beta test in your company. And then yeah, I mean, that, that was one of the biggest tickers. And then, you know, the second is I had a son, mm-hmm. um, you know, so I, I mean, they always told me that, you know, when you have kids, you start to see things a little bit different. But, That's true. you know, for me, I start, start stopped looking at like the next five, 10 years. I started looking at when I'm not here anymore. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just it, and when I started to see it in, in that way, it's like, man. I mean, I can make a lot of money, but I mean, for one, I'm gonna have to pay taxes on it. So I'd rather keep it within the family versus pay the big man. You know sure, what I'm saying? Sure. So, um, yeah, I think that really kind of changed my mindset on, um, on buying holds. And even now it's just like our main goals with, with rentals is not even cash flow. It's just, uh, cost segregation and getting the property is, I mean, with little to no equity and if we can pay it off faster then that's the goal is to have free and clear properties, yeah. keep it within the trust and keep it in the family. No, I love that. I mean, you you are such a dynamic person. <laughs> like, seriously, just I told you he was gonna to come you. with it. Um, and I'm just thinking, uh, I want to go back to 22, 23 year old Don, and I'm just thinking in terms of you know the. I'm not saying that the, the younger generation. They, it, it just seems like they want microwave success, you know. Yeah. And quite honestly, even in our age group, right? Mm-hmm. People want. I talk to someone. Hey, I want to be a realtor, but I want to make fifty thousand dollars next month. I'm like, that's not quite how it works, yeah. right? Right. right? But what was your mindset? I'm just thinking that you have you always been above average just in the way that you thought about things because there had to be a level of discipline when you were younger was it mm-hmm. always like this or like what were the turning points in your life i'm just curious because that that's going to be helpful to someone who's like i just want to be 28 with a rose you yeah, know yeah. but it just didn't happen like yeah. that um well for me i'm like extremely 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 competitive right and I, I kind of like look at my personality traits and what I'm good at, what I'm not good at. And I, I look at my skill sets. It's like, if anything, I'm probably one of the most competitive people I know when mm-hmm. it really, when it really boils down to. So when I was younger, I used to just compete with other people. Right. And then I realized people just get stagnant and they plateau. And then who are you going to compete with? You just plateau with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then I started competing with myself. Yeah. And that, I think that's what made the biggest difference is because every single year I wanted to do more than I mean, I'm try to double what I did the previous year. 
and made that commitment and is like, if I can develop systems and processes and clear expectations of what's going to happen when I spend money and hire people, this is the outcome. And I'll have to do every single year is just double that. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And then get to a point where it's just like, oh, what? we spent too much money and the net profits is just kind of stagnant in a way. But I think it really boils down to, you know, in my personality, just being really extremely competitive. Um, because like when you, when you do, when, when you look back at the previous year, I mean, even in this bear market, it's just like, we're, you know, um, getting very creative to, you know, even do more than what we did in the hottest markets. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. Um, so I think me mentally, I think it started there. Right. Um, and as far as like discipline, um, I mean, I've always, I, I, I don't know if it's like through trauma that I went through or, you know, things I went through in my childhood and stuff like that, but I've never been the type of person to rely on anybody other than myself. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. and then I kind of realized it's just like, man, I was in this space just relying on myself for so long. What if I, you know, bet on people and start relying on people too? And you, you got to kind of balance it out, uh, certain attributes to it. But when it comes to discipline, I think, you know, it, it, it forms a lot with, you know, understanding, what your real intentions of the future is and setting real goals and being competitive to actually hit them. Cause then your goals become tasks. It's yeah. not just kind of like an illusion. Right. It's like, this is what's going to happen. And then you physically see it. Um, and I think manifestation is very, very, very real. The things you say and the things that you think, you know, it, it has a, a clear output of what, what the income is or what the, like what you output is what, what, you, what yeah. input is. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm very, very well aware of that. Cause I mean, it, it, in this space you know it's not like we're you know uh swinging hammers shoveling shoveling or you know doing things with our hands like manual labor it's mental labor yeah. right so if you can figure out the your mind aspect to it i mean anything's possible you know yeah no that's sweet i, I like i really like the fact and i hope y'all picked that up that he is he competes with himself yeah, I, I think that's really important um one thing i want to touch on too is again uh you come from a, a from a service space, you're always mm -hmm. serving people, and you're definitely a giver. Have mm -hmm. you ever wrote, uh, read the book The Go Giver? Uh uh. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm gonna send it to you. Right. I'm gonna send it to you. Um, that reminds me of your personality, right? Um, to the point to where you're talking about being so aware where you are that I see the rise in your company and the mm -hmm. people. Who had the idea to gift Rolexes in the in the business? Um, and how did like how did that happen? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, I, I think it started because, you know, I'd buy Rolexes and stuff like that. And I remember in times in my office where people could, you know, barely pay their rent. And I was like looking at my, my position and it's just like, you know, it, it's it, it it didn't make me feel good. Mm -hmm. it, it didn't make me feel good that I was like the only one, you know, in, in, in that my position. company that, that yeah. had had that opportunity to do that. So it's like I knew something had to change. Um, and then, you know, when you have good people and you start to you kind of pay attention to, to what they're doing and stuff like that, you start to see other ways outside of just money. Um, I mean, you, you start to find different ways to kind of um, award certain at, at attributes of yeah. business. Right. So um, it's kind of where it came from. And uh, Omar was the first one to get it. And. Uh, we were having a conversation and he, he asked me, he's like, Hey man, should I, I, I could buy a Rolex or I can buy my girl a ring. I was like, bro, go buy your girl a ring. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I was talking to Lauren, my CEO or my CEO. And I was like, man, it would be really cool if we, we could like, you know, give somebody a Rolex. Right. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie. You know, I definitely stole the idea from other companies, yeah. um, you know, and how they award people. I remember like there's network marketing companies that they award like a ring yeah. or like mm -hmm. a chain or something like that. And I was like, well, what if we did a Rolex? That'd yeah. be cool. Um, so we, 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 we started with Omar and then all of a sudden, you know, people started to pay attention and started to work towards it. So it's like a, a cool attribute for, for things or for, for people within the company to work towards something even outside of money. And I, I mean, obviously you like watches too. I see Rolexes is kind of like parking money in a savings For account because, sure. Hey, what's the worst going to happen? You can just exit the watch. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's kind of this kind of way I see it. So, but yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I would say more people in the company have Rolexes than. For sure. <laughs> than I just think it was a cool. genius idea, man. Uh, and it really, it, it's a watch is a thing, right? So it's not yeah. really about the thing. I think you know that's just a coming together, man. And, and how you, you guys just love and respect, you know. Yep. Um, showing you, others yeah. Showing others that, and and I want to bring what I hear is I want to bring you along. Yeah, right? yeah. I don't want to yeah. be the only one. I tell my team, I don't want to be the only one in Cabo. I want us all to be in yeah. Cabo, yeah. you know, with the butler. Well, it, it, yeah. I mean, I think you kind of hit it too. It's just like. 
you know, um, I, I started paying attention to like different industries and what people do to, you know, scale to billion dollar companies and billion dollar valuations. And I, I kind of realized that I was like, I can't do it by myself yeah. mm-hmm. for one. And then for two, especially in the sales and marketing space is just like, you have to put other people on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but then, it, I mean, a, a good example, like if you look at like the music industry, right. Um, people get into the space, they make good music. They're very talented and they have hit records. They do concerts all the time. Um, but how do you scale past that? Mm. All of a sudden you become a producer, right? Like, I mean, you look at P Diddy, P Diddy probably has concerts going on every single week around the country and he's not even there. He's not on stage. He put these people on. Right. And, you know, granted that's obviously positioned in a way where you you still make a a split. But I mean, I I started kind of seeing it that way. It's like, man, if I can put enough people on, it's kind of, kind of like the same philosophy. Right. So it's just, um, moving from like the artist approach to like a producer approach and really understanding the power of putting other people on. Yeah, and and in that power, what you do is you gain some of your time back, right? Because oh, yeah. not only do I could do it, but I don't want to, right? Yeah. I don't want to be the one with my hands and my feet in every single thing because yeah. I want to be present for my family. I know you want to be present for yeah. your son. So as we close, what's next? What's next for Don Ruffin? Yeah, so man, I, I really enjoy being in, in business. It, it's like, like like Mark Cuban nailed it. It's just like I get to compete every day, and that's so awesome, right? Yeah. I love you know getting in the office and find ways to improve, and you know find ways in which people can make more money. But even beyond money, right? I've learned hard lessons too, where it's just like you can't buy loyalty. Mm-hmm. You know, people just don't work for money, so you have to continue to improve. You, you know, your mentality and who you are and your characteristics to be better, continue to, to improve on being an actual better person. Right. right. Um, and, and when you focus on that, I mean, if you just do 1% every single day, it's like 365 every single year. So it's like really hard to lose. If you make it a clear intention, it's like, how can I get 1% better every single day in God's eyes and in everybody else's eyes and in my own eyes. Right. So, um, I, I think that within itself is, is, is super awesome, but you know, it's just like, seeing at that it's just like i mean we were having a conversation i was like looking at offices like man we don't even have any seats left so it's like yeah. i don't have to continue to put people on so it's just like um i'm really excited so it's just like yeah i mean it, it, in the education space or like the stage space and event space you know it's like i have um a, a clear and, and and lighted uh vision on kind of what i foresee in that and you know it's it's time for me to put other people on i really i, I really think it's it's important to um, not not just be my face yeah. Uh, yeah. on flyers or on stages. And, you know, I'm working on putting my, my people on too and promoting that aspect to it just because, you know, I think it, it's time to, you know, put, put more people on in the industry. So that's kind of like my next goal um, yeah. is to uh, get events rocking in different markets as we continue to grow in different markets and um, make that super consistent and, you know, and put other people on stages and, and put other people on is as far as like the branding approach too, just cause I see how there's a power in that. Yeah. Well, I want to, uh, I want, I know I've told you before, man, I want to of course let you know how proud of I am, you know, of, of you guys success. Um, I want to also thank you for doing a podcast, but more importantly, man, I want to, I want to thank you for being a, uh, a selfless person in our space. Right. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. seriously, yeah. man. Because again, I've been to your masterminds and just the way that you pour into other people. Mm-hmm. And like, like when I first went to the mastermind, the first day, um, you know, we talked culture and all that kind of stuff. But the second day, everybody went to the front and discussed their business, yep. right? And you showed everybody how to, how to improve or help some yep. kind of way. I just thought that was genius. I've never been yep. to a situation like that. So yeah, keep doing what you're doing, man. We really, I appreciate uh, it. Well, I, I love seeing what you guys are doing, right? So it's like, obviously being a father, I told you this too, it was, it was pretty inspiring for, for you and your son to, you know, um, come in and we could chop it up and learn each other's businesses. Sure. I thought that was, that was awesome. Cause you know, like, like I said, it's just like, mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's like real recognizes real, yeah. you know, in, in all attributes of life, right? So, I mean, obviously, I'm not a perfect person, and you know, it's like there's there's definitely a lot of growth that internally that uh, you know I'm working on being continuing to improve and get better, and you know, it's just like the next ten years are awesome, you know, and, yeah. and even beyond that. But you know, it, it, I'm super excited about the market that we're in, just because I haven't experienced it yet, just because. Yeah. I've always been in like an upward market. So it's really cool to be be able to come in and, and be competitive in a different market. Right. Yeah, so sure. I really enjoy it. Right. I've been looking forward to this time for a long time and um, I'm very excited for the next, for the next couple of years. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, well, we're excited for you and we appreciate you being here. Absolutely. Thank you. Brother. Thank you guys for having me on. Absolutely. Yeah.